Well, hello there, everyone. Hope you're excited as I am about this new feature I've released. Uh, something I've been working on for a while, and it allows X input to work with the Pin One Mini Machine or any Pin One uh, device that I sell. Uh, what that means is that if you install the Pin One uh, X input firmware, which is in here, uh, then your device will then work uh, right out of the box with Steam uh, without having to do any calibration or configuration of the buttons at all, uh, as well as your solenoids. So it works, so your solenoids will work with not only just the flippers as they do you know, with the buttons, but they'll also uh, work with all the pop bumpers and the slings and any other events that may be sent over from Steam on, on any game that supports uh, supports that. So really, most games will support feedback right out of the box. You won't have to configure DOF. You won't have to configure DOF links. The plunger, nudge, all of your buttons and everything will work perfectly. Uh, there are some things you give up, however. So once you do that firmware to X input update, you'll no longer be able to connect to the pin one. Now you can always go back in here and update the firmware to the standard firmware using this button here. And I'm gonna show you how to do that and also walk you through some tips and tricks on installing firmware updates because that could be helpful anyway for other reasons. So right now I'm just gonna show you basically how this works. So typically when you go in here updating the firmware, is as simple as just clicking this button, this update firmware button, and letting it go. However, there are, you know, sometimes it may not go as well. You'll actually get this bug right here. And the fix for that is really simple. I'm going to show you how to do that right now because this is a nice thing to know how to do. You can click this button and it's going to come up with this dialog. And when you get this dialog, I don't know why it didn't come up properly the first time, but when you get this dialog, before you click OK, just simply unplug the pin one, plug it back in, and then click OK. And when you do that, it'll put the firmware in there right away. So if you ever have issues updating the firmware, that's one workaround to be able to get. And that's just with the standard firmware. Now, when you go to install, X input, if you want to do that. Before you do that, make sure that you have your accelerometer set in a good spot for Steam. Typically, your max shouldn't be that high. You can kind of gauge it because when you move this around, you can see where the cursor is going to move. And right now, you can see my max is with that red line. And if my cursor is getting to that red line pretty easily about where I think I'm going to nudge, then that's where you want that max set to. If if it's not getting there at all, like I think traditionally this might be set to a thousand, which is really, really big. And it's really hard to get that to go there. And you'll notice it a lot in Steam games because it it's like looking for the joystick movement to do the nudge. And so you have to make sure that's a little bit lower so that you can actually move. I had some customers kind of saying, hey, I can't get this thing to nudge at all. And it's like, all you got to do is lower that max. So make sure before you do it, because you're not going to be able to connect in here and do this calibration once you update to Steam. So that's the first thing you want to do. Um, you'll also want to make sure over here, if you want your button triggers for your solenoids to be set. So you've got button one triggering output one, button two triggering output two. Set that up beforehand. And as well as any of your, if you want to configure um, really just how your buttons are lighted. So most of these toy categories aren't going to matter, but down where the buttons are, if you want light show high or light show medium, you can also set that beforehand. And then of course, the last thing is the plunger, just making sure that you've got it, that it's all calibrated and you've got it configured the way that you like it to be configured. And then once you have that set up, then you should be ready to update the firmware to the X input firmware. And to do that, it's just like updating on any other firmware. You can, you can do it with the reset button or just do it the standard way. 
And like I said, you can easily just unplug it and then it'll come up with a dialogue warning, which again, for some reason, it's got some uh, weird thing going on here. I, I, I've had this happen before on my computer in particular. Yeah, that cause it's just like, it takes a while to show it up. So it's going to say, it's going to warn you, hey, it's not going to allow a connection. And then you just plug it in, click OK. And it will update that firmware. And that's it. I mean, now that that firmware is installed, uh, you can go ahead and use this directly in Steam. You won't have to do anything in Steam to make it work. It's going to be uh, it's going to be detected and work right out the gate. You can see things like the solenoid are still working here, but when you're playing Steam, it'll show up and you'll be able to use it. And I'll actually play it in Steam in a minute. But the first thing, now the next thing I want to show you though is obviously now you won't be able to connect to the board anymore. And so you're, you're going to have to, in order to actually get back to the other firmware, you need to actually reset the pin one board, which uh, you can do it by pushing the reset button. If you have one of the older pin one units, though, it can be a little bit difficult to get to. You can take the top off and you can even, you, probably the easiest way to do it is to just pull the pin one board out because the reset button is actually underneath underneath the pin one board over here. So it's a little bit hard to push without pulling the, the unit out and then pushing your finger in there. But it's not that hard to do on this particular unit. I have the ability to push the button. And there's a new um, setting here to update firmware with reset button. So in order to do that, you just push the reset button. And I'm going to do that right now. And click this button. Oh, you know what? I need to set it to the right. It's COM port 4 when you reset it. I'm going to just um, disconnect this from all together so you can see how that happens from scratch. So when you come in here, you see there's no COM ports available. When I push the reset button, it's going to show COM port 4 there. So now I know, okay, it's on COM port 4. And so now I can just go ahead and push it one more time. And update the firmware and now i'll be back on the original it's it's actually the same set of code essentially but now i can connect to it and i can update my accelerometer and all that stuff once again so it's pretty easy to switch back and forth between the two of them if you want to do that and if you want to just play around with it so as long as you can push the reset button because the one thing is if you can't easily push the reset button then it's hard to go back to the original so software. Uh, but if you're primarily a Steam player or VPX even too, and you don't really care for all the additional features and configuration, or you have it set up a certain way, you can switch over to the X input config and be completely fine. It'll work just like a standard game controller would at that point. And uh, you, know, you can be happy with that for as long as you need be. There's not really a huge reason to switch back and forth between the firmware versions unless you you know just want to try it out but it's easy to switch it back don't be nervous doing it you're not going to break anything upgrading the firmware uh, nothing's going to happen to the pin one if it fails or something like that so it's nothing to really worry about as far as <clears throat> as far as breaking the pin one but i'm just going to show you that one more time i'll switch it back because yeah it's going to want to be see it's on com 10 now if i push this button then you see COM4 come up, and let's see if I can get it fast enough. Yeah, see, now I just switched it back to the X input firmware. So that's how that's going to work. All right, so now uh, I'll show you how this runs on Steam. And I've not done any calibration whatsoever with this thing. And you'll see that everything's going to work just like you'd expect. So the only problem is it's laggy because it's on my computer and FX is tough. Welcome 
But you can see plunger works perfectly. You can hear the solenoids going off. And buttons working perfectly. I mean, the whole thing is just great. With the exception of, like I said, running it on a laptop is not a good idea for FX. <laughs> uh, but you won't have those issues if you're running on a normal PC at all. So I get all the solenoid feedback. Where could Whisper be? <clears throat> and I should also show you nudge working. So you can see it actually. It even uh, gives me feedback when I nudge. I'll just get the ball stuck and then you can see it actually moving around like that. So pretty awesome experience overall. And next I'll show you FX3 too. So actually leaving so soon. You can see that I can even do all the menu navigation from this. So it's set so that this button over here on, on the left right here turns on the shift keys so that I can go up and down and left and right. So I can quit. I can go left to yes and then quit. And actually on the newer ones, I have an older one here, but on the newer ones, they're set in a diamond shape pattern. So it like makes a little more sense when you're going up and down and left and right. So I'm going to go ahead and exit this now. Go to exit game. So here, here's FX3. Same thing as before. A lot, a lot less laggy now. <laughs> Since I'm playing on a laptop, this little big cable. But again, you can see how the solenoids are all triggering from the different table events. It's again, kind of a cool, cool thing that you get that you wouldn't necessarily get otherwise without doing some setup. I mean, you can still get all that using uh, DOF links, of course. But it's nice that you don't have to go through all those steps. You literally just install the firmware. And just like that, you get everything. Nudge, left, right, up, down, nudge, all that stuff works flawlessly. So anyway, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and exit out of here. Because there's no point in continuing to show you that. But again, just wanted to show you how it actually works, how it looks. And you can see how I can navigate through all the menus right from the pin one. Don't even have to use the computer at all to make that happen. Okay. That is all that I have to show you guys today. But I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it shows you kind of how things have advanced over time and how I am dedicated to continuing to build onto this. And of course, uh, the community continues to support it too, which is awesome. I hope to see more and more of these kinds of things coming out. And I hope you enjoyed that. And I will see you all next time.